so we have here the classic baked Alaska, and I mean, we're talking the origin, the, the mothership the of baked Alaska. It's pretty simple, we light the torch, and just a little spin of the stand. Okay, I'm nervous. Well, um, Chef, it's, it's really, it's been very nice, but I'm gonna just. <laughs> We're here at Delmonico's, and this restaurant is how old? I feel like I should ask both of you, or either of you. 1831. 1831. But with an interruption during Prohibition. So, wow, if we do math, mother of pearl, that's it's a long time. a long time. Would you agree Delmonico's is one of those places that's sort of been a tethering rod of inspiration for what we might call American food? Definitely. It's one of the most important restaurants in American food history. What do you think it was like to eat here a hundred years ago? They would put on eight or nine courses routinely. Uh, the chef in the late 19th century said he could serve a 14 course meal in two and a half hours. I think that's part of what Delmonico's responsibility historically is to us in the past and the present. I mean I expect opulence. You know we want to try and give you you know an over-the-top experience. for the classics. We're known for, for steak, and like Paul said, we're known for big portions and big meals. We have to have some of those traditional dishes. Yeah. So people come here to see those. What we're doing is just trying to keep things interesting. On our last menu change during the winter, we put a, a vegan lasagna. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, it got hot in here. All of a sudden, I'm telling you, all the ghosts of Delmonico's that, past it. are uh, saying, are, are down on "Vegan top of lasagna." Us. All right, so here we are. This is your your signature Delmonico steak. We have a steak named after yeah. where you're working. It's real simple. You know, we start with a really good product, so we don't mess with it too much. It's just going to get a little salt and pepper and it's gonna go on the, the broiler. Get it. Broiler gets to be about 12 to 1400 degrees, depending on how many steaks are on it and the how usual busy we are. 1400 degrees. And the Delmonico brothers used to say the Delmonico steak was the best cut available at the time. Over the years, it has kind of turned into a boneless ribeye. Fat content, the marbleization, so that has kind of become the signature. So some of these dishes here, Delmonico's actually invented. The lobster Newberg, the Delmonico steak. The other classic is the Eggs Benedict, for sure. There's a lot of controversy about it. It looks like Delmonico's invented it in uh, 1862, but there's another theory that a, a different guy, not named Benedict, came into the Waldorf Hotel and they served him this as a hangover cure. So um, this is sort of the, the OG huevos rancheros, or? Correct, exactly. I'm sorry, I, I think I just demeaned all of history by saying that, but what's a dish that you think speaks to Delmonico's now, or of the future? We have the scallops with the bone marrow. So, so bone marrow, horseradish, and, and blueberry, blueberry, a classic, said no one ever. Um, <laughs> how did that, I mean, did you have a dream, or what happened? Works really well together. What are you talking about? Yeah. Were you at home eating a slice of toast with jam and you said, honey, I'm sick of this Benedict and Newberg trap That's I'm it. in we're and coming, you put horse We're going horse in the opposite direction. 
I actually think Delmonico's is pointing to the two types of food trends we often see. The vegan lasagna points to people that want to hone in on a limited diet and live a different lifestyle. That's the Delmonico's expression of that, I think in a very opulent, stunning form. And then there's the Delmonico's innovation, which comes with combining something like blueberries with horseradish. I mean... You know, we want to stay around for another 180 years. We still get it all at Delmonico's. Wow.